So I'm going to go over the uh, quiz on kinematics and free fall fairly quickly. Uh, take a look at what you did, what problems you missed, and see if you can learn from those mistakes, especially for the upcoming test. I want you to do well on that test, and I think this is a key part of it. All right, a vector. A vector is anything that has direction associated with it. Okay, time, it does not. Speed is just a scale, or velocity would be the vector. That distance is a scale, or displacement would be the vector. Um, acceleration is a vector. It has direction associated with it. We talked about negative acceleration for acceler uh, due to gravity or anything else. Okay, this one, I suggest you do calculations. Okay, you can't, I mean, it's not something you just do off the top of your head. It's in free fall. In the free fall, the acceleration is definitely about 10 meters per second squared. It's actually 9.8, but it's about. So hopefully you don't take that too literally. So next question is, what about A or B? So the cat falls for one second. So if I want to know how fast it's going, its velocity is simply velocity, initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Because I know the time, I know the acceleration, I know the initial speed. So the acceleration is about 10 times 1 is 10. So the speed is about 10 meters per second. The ball fell about 10 meters. Well, I can't say that if it went from 0 to 10 meters per second in one second, it fell 10 meters, because it wasn't going that speed the whole time. So I would say 1 half at squared, right, is my distance. And so time is 1 squared times 10 is 10 times half is 5. So you only travel 5 meters. So that's why it's b. All right, next one. Um, a lot of you got answered A. You're half correct. It, it, cat A is definitely going faster at the end, but not because Z slowed down. Z did slow down, but just because you slowed down doesn't mean you're going slower than somebody else. You could have been going a lot faster. If a car's going 80 miles per hour, another car's going 40, and the first car slows down to 60, it's still going faster. So what you look for is the last two dots. That's the instantaneous speed at the end. And notice that cat A went further in those last two instances. So that's why the answer is B. Number four, um, just make sure you understand the difference about velocity or acceleration. The answer is D. You can be moving, but you don't have to be accelerating. Number five is false. Why? Because when you go around a curve, you're changing direction. If you're changing direction, you are accelerating. So uh, that's why it's false. Rate of change of velocity is a definition of acceleration, not speed. Speed is the rate of change of position. So that's also false. I think number seven, you didn't read carefully or you got confused. Units of acceleration, that was a gimme, meters per second squared. Units of time squared, well time is seconds, so that's second squared. Then I want you to multiply them together. So if you take meters per second squared and multiply it by second squared, you get meters, okay, which kind of makes sense because x is a distance unit, so it should have given meters. So that was worth a point. Um, next one, direction, okay. Describe how the direction, many of you did not answer about direction. You just said it's increasing or decreasing. I didn't ask that, okay. So while it's going in the air, the velocity is decreasing and the acceleration is constant. That's not what I was asking. The point is the velocity, it's moving up. Okay, it's velocity's up, so that's a positive velocity, or you could have set up. And the acceleration, if it's slowing down, then it's accelerating down. We know it's always accelerating down, it's in free fall, so you should have said acceleration is down, or negative. I would accept it either, of, either of those. So please read carefully. Okay, um, this is a kinematics problem, this is VI, this is VF, you're given a distance D. I want A. So you just go to your reference tables, look at them. There's an equation that says VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. So A is going to be, um, I'm going to put it in the numbers, it's going to be 18 squared minus 6 squared all over um, 2 times 30. You do the math, you get 4.8 meters per second squared. Okay. So if you did A is delta V over T, you don't have any time. Don't force 30 into the time equation. Don't make equations up, because that's what I saw with some of you. All right, this is a two-part problem. You have a reaction, and then you have a breaking. So how far does it travel during the reaction? Okay, so in terms of a VTAD table, and we do that, we know the initial speed is... Uh, 33. We know that the time it takes to decide is 0.5 seconds. We know the acceleration is zero because you're told that it's moving at a constant speed. Okay. So 
So he's just reacting. So you're not accelerating. And he has his foot's not on a brake. So that's why you know the acceleration is constant. So the distance is simply a velocity times time, 33 times 0.5. So in that time, he goes 16.5 meters. Okay, now the brakes are applied. So we have a slightly different situation. So if I do a VTAT again, I'll just do it in this space here, the initial speed is still 33. The time we don't know. Okay, you can't say that it's 0.5 seconds. That was just during the time to react. It's, the braking is a separate thing. We know due to, due to the acceleration, the braking is negative 5.2 meters per second squared. And we know that final velocity is zero because we're coming to a rest. So if I want distance, I would use the equation v squared equals, or vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad. And I could solve for distance. If I put in the numbers, I should get about 100 seven or so meters or hundreds some small number in the hundreds okay so then the answer to this is no because if i add this and this it's less than the one so if you got the wrong answer here but still answer no you weren't penalized all right so we have a free fall problem we have vi we know it's that how much time is it before it reaches the top what do we know about the top of the trajectory we know its final velocity is zero and so you also know because it's free fall the acceleration is negative 9.8 so you've got one, two, or excuse me, one, two, three pieces of information looking for time. What equation? Vi plus at. So I can put in zero equals 20 plus negative 9.8 times time. And time is going to be negative 20 divided by negative 9.8, which is about two seconds, 2.04 seconds or something like that. Pretty straightforward. What's the acceleration at the top? It's still accelerating. It's still in free fall. So you should have put 9.8 meters per second per second. Negative is fine. If you didn't put that in, it count off. But it's not zero. What's zero at the top is its speed. So then I asked, air resistance becomes significant. We talked about that. There was a tutorial. What happens to its velocity? It, it reaches terminal velocity, something like that, becomes constant. Okay, so it's not going to keep gaining speed the whole time. It eventually reaches a maximum speed. So if you said something like that, that's a point. What's going to happen to the acceleration? Well, if you're moving at constant speed, the acceleration is zero. So you're not going to be in free fall the whole time if air resistance is significant. Okay, so that it was a 24-point uh, quiz. Hopefully you can learn from that. Don't repeat the same mistakes for the test.